Pterosaurs and their relatives, the dinosaurs, likely came from an ancestor that was at least somewhat bipedal and somewhat quadrupedal. It essentially could shift its position depending on what kind of environment it was moving through. Except now there's a new fossil of the pterosaur side that's starting to mix that up a little bit, because it's pretty unique. Venetoraptor gassinae was this really strange Lagerpatid. The Lagerpatids are the sister group to the pterosaurs, so right next to them, and together the pterosaurs and the Lagerpatids form another group called Pterosauromorpha. In general, the Lagerpatids seem kind of generic. They're pretty similar to a lot of the animals that lead up to both the pterosaurs and the dinosaurs. There's just a few very specific features that do help to suggest they're closer to the pterosaurs, such as the shape of the femur bone. The ones we found have also seemed to be fairly small and were, again, probably running around on two legs some of the time and four legs some of the time, or potentially even climbing trees some of the time, although there's some lacking evidence for that. This new animal, though, will hopefully provide some of that evidence with future research, because Venetoraptor was, again, strange. It had very, very large hands, especially for one of the Lagerpatids. It also had very, very long back legs, meaning it was basically always going to be bipedal because the large hands and claws really wouldn't be good for walking on. This really helps to add to the diversity of the Ornithoderans that were around during the Middle Triassic. And by Ornithoderans, I mean things that are related to both the pterosaurs and the dinosaurs, along with those animals' closest relatives, so the Lagerpatids are included. The large hands and arms of Venetoraptor do suggest that it was either grabbing prey or, again, potentially climbing trees, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit, but the hands are also really interesting for another reason, because the fourth digit is pretty long. In most of the other Lagerpatids, such as Scleromachlis, we actually don't see the fourth digit being that large. And this is really important when we look at pterosaurs, because pterosaurs essentially evolved away the fifth digit, what would be the pinky, and then the ring finger grew to a massive size, and that's what supported the wing. And the ring finger is the fourth digit. That's what they used to fly. This really does help support the idea that the Lagerpatids were really closely related to the pterosaurs, and not just some other odd branch of the Ornithoderans. But that's not all that's strange about Venetoraptor. So there's also the skull, and specifically the very tip of the skull, because it would have had a beak, and a raptorial beak, meaning something that's probably used to either cut into meat or potentially eat hard fruits. Fruits were only barely evolving at this point, if at all, so it's more likely it was actually cutting into meat using a beak the same way birds of prey do today. And this is 80 million years before other theropod dinosaurs would actually evolve a similar beak, especially in things like the oviraptorans. Unfortunately, we really don't know a lot about how the Lagerpatids would have lived their lives. There's been some suggestions that they probably climbed trees, but there's not been really, really good evidence. Hopefully with these new claws that we found from the Raptor, we can actually do some analyses and see how good they would have been at doing that, but that's going to be research down the line. Additionally, it is really interesting to look at where it was found, in the Santa Maria Formation of Brazil because there's a ton of other Ornithoderans here, including some early dinosaurs like Buriolestes, but also even another Lagerpatid. Ixalorpedon lived alongside Venetoraptor, and it would have been a little bit smaller, and some of the pieces are missing even more than in Venetoraptor, but there is enough to show that it was a separate genus, and that means there were two of these animals living alongside each other just totally fine, as well as early dinosaurs. So this area was very, very important, for the broad diversity of Ornithoderans that we later got during the Jurassic and the Cretaceous. This may have even been the birthplace of the first dinosaurs and the first pterosaurs. There's been some new finds in South America as well that do also suggest early pterosaurs lived there. It's just a matter of hopefully finding some more fossils, of especially the Lagerpatids because they're normally very partial, to try and get a better sense of what exactly was going on with them.